our ladybugs have been so helpful in getting rid of our aphid problem. And in this video, we're going to talk about three ways we're trying to keep them not only around, but happy and healthy. Guten yardening, everybody. A couple of weeks ago, we had a terrible aphid infestation. And so we invested in some ladybugs with the hopes that they would come along and eat those aphids right up. And they did. They really ate those aphids quite quickly. And one of the things that we know about ladybugs is they're actually pretty similar to humans in that the three things that they need the most of are shelter, food, and water. And in this video, we're going to show you how we're providing those three ingredients to our ladybugs so that they stick around, they live a longer period of time, and they keep reproducing so that any aphids that try to make their way back into here or repopulate won't stand a chance. Now, when we first released our ladybugs into our growing area, they had plenty of food because their primary source of food typically are aphids and pollen. And while we didn't have a lot of pollen for them to feed on, we had plenty of aphids. So they had lots of food from the beginning, but once they start eating and they can consume 60 to 80 aphids a day, and really thousands in their lifetime, once they start eating and they start clearing out that population, that part of their food supply begins to run out. And if we want to keep them around for their life cycle, we need to provide them with an alternative source of nutrition. And one way we're going to do that is we're going to supplement with a few things that we know that they like. For example, you can give them raisins that have been soaked in water for a while. They love those raisins. They even eat bananas. And really, just about any non-acidic fruit they'll eat. The acidic fruit causes a problem as they're trying to digest it. It can actually harm them and in the end kill them. And so you don't want to do anything with lemons or limes or anything really acidic. So you focus on those non-acidic fruits like grapes and other berries that aren't going to cause them those problems. And that will provide them with some of the food that they need. And one other food which we're going to feed them today is their honey. Now the way we're going to feed them honey is actually going to provide two of the things that I said they needed because I said they need shelter, water, and food. Well, this can be a source of food for them, but on top of that, the way we place it can also help to provide some shelter. You see, ladybugs spend a lot of their time on the undersides of the vegetables that we have in our growing area. In fact, they tend to lay their eggs on the undersides of leaves. They don't like to always be out in the open. So if you can provide an area that's going to have food and some shelter out of the light, kind of a private ladybug area, then you're going to find that they're going to take advantage of that and they might even take the opportunity in that area to lay eggs and produce more ladybugs. Again, if we can create an ecosystem where our ladybugs are not only happy, but they're willing to replicate, then we don't have to continually purchase more ladybugs. We can keep these in here for the long haul. Now, the way we're going to set this up is really simple. And what I have here is a half of a paper towel roll. Now, of course, a toilet paper roll would work just as well. I just didn't have any empty ones right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this as an area. You can see there's plenty of shade inside of this. We're going to use this as an area where the ladybugs can congregate as they'd like to. And so we're also going to put some food on the interior of this. And it's really quite simple. I can take a piece of string or in this case, a piece of yarn, and I want it long enough to fit exactly what we're doing, which is in our grow area. And I'm just going to drop it right through here just like so. And now, depending on how high or how low I want to hang this from the ceiling of my grow tent area, I have a makeshift ladybug habitat. That simple. And I can hang up multiple of these throughout my grow tent or even my growing areas. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some honey on the inside which will encourage my ladybugs to venture in here. And now they have habitat and they have food in the same place. Now I could do the exact same thing if I wanted to put some raisins in here, if I wanted to put a little slip of banana inside here as well, 
this is a space then that the ladybugs will get to. They'll congregate. They'll be out of the bright light. They'll feel as though they have shelter. And we know that ladybugs do enjoy the dark. In fact, the best time to release them if you want them to stick around is as it's getting dark rather than in the bright sun because they'll fly away right away. By providing an alternate source of food, we're extending the amount of time that our ladybugs will spend with us because they'll be able to survive longer. So if we have shelter and we have food for our ladybugs, that leaves us with the need for water. And this one is so important. When you release ladybugs for the first time, ideally you should have a spray bottle or something like the spray bottle where you can spray the leaves and even spray the ladybugs in their container as well so that as they're coming out of that hibernating state, you know, when you buy ladybugs, they're basically hibernating. They're not moving around very much. And as they heat up and they start to move around, they're coming out of that hibernating state, they're going to be thirsty. And so if you can provide them instant access to water here in the container, and then if you can spray the leaves of the plants that you're putting the ladybugs on, they have that instant access to a drink of water that's going to make them happy. But a couple of days down the road, I mean, that spray, that initial spray is gone really quickly. So what you should do is provide them with a little bowl to drink out of. Now, you don't want to just pour a whole bunch of water in a bowl because the ladybugs will get down in there and they'll drown. They'll flip upside down, they'll drown, and that's not really what your goal is. Instead, if you take a paper towel, place it in a dish, could be a plate, could be a bowl just like this one, and spray it down, the end result will be a nice damp paper towel filled with plenty of moisture for them to come, land on, drink, fly away, and you're no longer worried about the possibility of them dying. Now this is something that can be placed at multiple locations wherever you're growing. So if I'm growing outdoors and I wanna provide them with some water, I probably have an easier time spraying the plants down a little bit each day, keeping them nearby. Indoors, I'm not spraying my plants down every single day necessarily, but I can place these again around in strategic locations nearby perhaps where I'm having a problem with aphids or some other insect infestation that they're going to handle and they're happy because they have something to drink. Using these three steps, you've provided them with shelter, food, and water, the three key ingredients to a ladybug's ability to survive. And really, again, that's what we want. You know, I was really surprised a couple of months ago when we were talking about ladybugs and I started researching some of the common questions about ladybugs. And one of the most commonly searched questions is, how do I get rid of ladybugs? And the reason why people are asking that question is because sometimes ladybugs arrive into your home. And I can understand the frustration there if you're overrun by ladybugs or if you have the wrong variety of ladybug, perhaps that's not as helpful as the ladybugs we're using to eat these insects. But as a general rule, ladybugs are an excellent sign that you're going to have less of a problem with insects that you don't want to be in your garden with pests and with other soft bodied insects that they love to feed on. So one of the other things we can recommend, and this is, I guess, a little bit of a bonus tip, is there are quite a few plants that attract ladybugs. And I'm gonna show you a list right here because there really are too many for me to just mention off the top of my head. But there are quite a few varieties of plants that will attract them, that will cause them to try to make their way to your property. And in our opinion, that is not a bad thing. So please keep in mind that when we're talking ladybugs, we are talking all natural pest control. They are a wonderful addition to your garden and we're going to try our best to keep them alive as long as we possibly can. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you're working with ladybugs, we would love to know what your experience has been. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, when you're with us, you are good to grow.